Right now, this church is kind of ugly. So if I'm going to glorify God with it, I need to make it more beautiful. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. And today I'm going to talk about beauty from a Christian perspective, why beauty really matters, and why I think it's important to build beautiful churches like I'm doing here in Minecraft. So, uh, in today's world, it's very common for people to say things like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There's nothing objectively beautiful. There's nothing that's just beautiful in and of itself, regardless of what anyone thinks. We say beauty is subjective, meaning it varies from person to person, and there's no right or wrong when it comes to beauty. At least, you know, that's what people say these days. However, I'm going to say why that's not the historical Christian perspective. Historically, um, Christians have believed beauty actually is objective, and it's actually been used as an argument for the existence of God. Of course, in conjunction, in conjunction with many other arguments. But, um, yeah, it's like a lot of things today are completely relativized, and I think that's the influence of, you know, modernism and postmodernism. We think that, you know, morality is relative, we think that beauty is relative. We think that religious truth is relative, and when I say we, I'm not referring to me, I'm referring to our culture, which does affect the way we all think. No one can be separated from their culture, but even saying that could be considered a, a product of, of this culture. So my point is, um, a lot of people are taught today that beauty doesn't really matter because it doesn't actually exist. It's just something we create in our minds, but historically... Um, Christianity has taught that beauty is a real objective thing because beauty is that which reflects the nature of God. So um, there's a classic teaching called the Transcendentals. The Transcendentals are basically goodness, truth, and beauty. And all of these things go together because they all reflect the nature of God himself. Sorry, there's, I'm just going to turn off the, the chat real quick. Sorry about that. As you know, this is a, a public server, and there are a bunch of other people on the server. So, yeah, where was I? The, yeah, the transcendentals are goodness, truth, and beauty. And traditionally, the church has seen all of those as objective and going together. So the church has thought that truth is objective, and, you know, Christianity is objectively true. It's not just our truth. We think that goodness is objective. There's objective morality because um, without God... Morality truly is subjective because people have different opinions on what's right and wrong. But if God exists, then there's someone to say, this is what's right, this is what's wrong, and if since God is God, we can't question that. Um, and we also have thought that beauty is objective. And this, even for people who consider themselves really devout conservative Christians, this is the hardest one to accept for most people because our culture has really convinced a lot of us, including me in the past, that beauty really is a subjective thing. But, you know, before I make some philosophical argument, let me just say, look at the artwork that was produced back when people thought beauty was objective. Think of, you know, classical music, or traditional-looking churches, or just traditional buildings in general, and compare that to modern art and modern music and modern-looking churches. Think about that for a minute. Which one seems more beautiful? When people thought that beauty was something objective because it was something reflected in God's nature... Oh, I, I, there are other people in the server now, so I can't sleep. When people thought that beauty was objective, I think they really did make more beautiful stuff. And all the, you know, historic, beautiful cathedrals are really beautiful because, you know, they were built by people who thought beauty was reflective of the nature of God, and they made beautiful churches in order to glorify God. So you may say, you know, even if there is some objective aspect to beauty, why does it matter that our churches look beautiful? Like, isn't it, doesn't what really matter, isn't it that the preaching of the gospel is what really matters and beauty is just a nice thing on the side? And a lot of people think uh, beauty can even be a distraction from the gospel and from the preaching of the church. And there have been, you know, really smart Christians who have thought that. And un unfortunately, I mean, I disagree with this, but John Calvin was kind of of that perspective that if a church is, is too beautiful, it may um, distract from the, from the worship of the church. And he had his reasons. I will say he was definitely influenced by his historical context because during the Reformation, that was the most corrupt 
point in the history of the Roman Catholic Church. So yeah, you can't really um, blame them for, for thinking that and for being suspicious of uh, how the Roman Church would spend millions in, or what's equivalent of billions today in uh, making beautiful cathedrals but you know not preach the gospel to people and hoard a, and the elites would hoard a lot of wealth for themselves so yeah you can see why um people were skeptical of that but um the beauties the beauty of those ancient churches was not without reason definitely not okay sorry about that so where was i so yeah i was talking about how traditional churches you know think uh, Roman Catholic cathedrals or Anglican churches or um, Lutheran churches and even some Presbyterian and Methodist churches, you know, historically they look gorgeous. And there's something otherworldly about them with all the stained glass and the ethereal sounding choirs. Whereas if you go to like a Baptist church or a non-denominational church or a Pentecostal church, the buildings look very regular. It's like the building looks like it could be used for something else if you take out just like the cross in the center, if they even have that. So the point is, why does it matter? Well, I feel like it. there is a theological reason why some churches try to look more beautiful and otherworldly and why other churches try to look more simple and plain. So a historic Christian idea has been that the church is a meeting place of heaven and earth. It's where basically heaven colonizes earth through the church. The church is was seen as a colony of the kingdom of heaven here on earth, and that its architecture and music should reflect that. That's why the music of traditional churches sounds so otherworldly. Like, the Bible talks about the worship of God in heaven with beautiful angel choirs and a bunch of, you know, figures dressed in white robes and stuff. It's really majestic. It's like worship for a king because it literally is a kingdom. It's the kingdom of God which is here now. And the church was meant to reflect that down here on earth. Because the traditional view is that the kingdom of God really is here now. But with um, more modern evangelicalism, the theology sort of shifted somewhat. It shifted from the kingdom of heaven being a present reality here and now to the kingdom of heaven being only something in the future and now our only job here on earth is to basically save souls to go to heaven. Uh, so yeah, there was a big shift. So because of that, the job of the church became very pragmatic. And that's why um, people put a lot less effort into making the church look aesthetically beautiful and making the worship music sound beautiful. They, they just wanted to make it sound, you know, folksy and regular, lest they, lest they scare off people, you know. Um, so yeah, that was basically the, the theological reason behind it. There also was the aspect of not wanting to distract people, but, I mean, I mean, come on. Like, even, even the later uh, followers of Calvin realized that there's not much of a good reason for that, which is why, like, the really early Calvinist churches actually did look very simple, but then more um, Presbyterian and other Reformed churches that were built later... Um, had the same architectural styles as all the other, like, you know, neo-Gothic churches. So that wasn't really much of an issue. The The main issue was not with the Reformed Calvinist churches. It was with the more non-denominational evangelical churches that really saw the church as only, uh, in, at least the church building, as just a, a pragmatic thing. So now some people say... Um, is it is it biblical to have beautiful sanctuaries or is it that um god just cares about our heart and doesn't really care um so of course god cares about our heart more than our outward expression of worship but it is true that beautiful worship and beautiful sanctuaries do glorify god and in the old testament even when the israelites were wandering in the desert and clearly weren't rich god still did command them to make a beautiful tabernacle and when Solomon was king, God commanded him to make a beautiful temple, and it was one of the most beautiful feats of the ancient world. So it is definitely biblical to make beautiful things. And it's like, I, if like, um, if you took like an evangelical who had not really read the Old Testament and described to them how decorated the temple was and didn't say it was the Old Testament temple, they would think it was something that was like Roman Catholic just because of how, how beautiful it was. But no, that, that was just what God commanded his people to do. 
So um, I think that, that that concept of beauty being something objective that glorifies God has really been lost um, to a lot of to a lot of evangelicals these days, and I think that's honestly honestly quite a tragic thing. So, and I don't think I built this right. Um, I, I'm talking about uh, building beautiful stuff here, but you know, I'm not even. I don't think I'm even building this this church the right way. Uh, when I say the right way, it's because I sort of sketched out a plan for how I wanted this to look, and I'm trying to I'm trying to follow that plan, but to not much not much success. So. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to make a like a door and stuff. So yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, there there is definitely um, a biblical. There are definitely biblical reasons to make our worship spaces beautiful, because even uh, the book of Hebrews says that our sanctuaries are copies of heaven here on earth. And um, even if even though what we have now is not exactly the same as the Old Testament Israelite temple. Um, Presbyterians, which is the tradition I'm in, believe that there's continuity between the old, the old covenant and the new covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So we don't think that God's preferences change, like change dramatically between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We think that you know, if something was good in the Old Testament, it's probably good in the New Testament. And it's like we don't follow the exact same like ceremonial laws, but we believe that beauty is a universal, transcendental thing that's not just part of a certain like ceremonial tradition or, or whatever so yeah the point is there are deep theological reasons why beauty does matter in churches and look at th think about like the stained glass which by the way i am going to add a lot of stained glass to these windows um when the light shines through them it really does look heavenly when um the new jerusalem in the book of revelation is described when heaven and earth are joined together the, the holy city is described as being filled with all sorts of different colored jewels, which, like a kaleidoscope, it looks absolutely beautiful. And stained glass kind of looks like that. It's like different uh, translucent colors. Stained glass, even before I was Christian, I thought stained glass was one of the most beautiful things that exists. Because, like, it is. Stained glass is absolutely gorgeous. Especially when it's, um, when it's done right in a church. Now, uh, some people think, you know, stained glass often has, like, images of Jesus, and a lot of the Reformed tradition has been opposed to images of Jesus. But, um, not all stained glass needs to be images. There's, like, just stained glass of, like, you know, plants or geometric patterns. And even when, um, even when there are stained glass images, they're usually not really detailed. Like, I understand why um, people have a problem with like detailed statues of Jesus and Mary that people go up and kiss and stuff. I understand how that could almost slip into idolatry, like what they have in the in a lot of the Catholic churches. But um, like a lot of the stained glass that does exist in churches, it's nothing like that. It's just like a very um, undetailed, sort of unrealistic, but cool looking picture of Jesus, like almost more similar to an Eastern icon that doesn't look super realistic. So, uh, yeah, and a lot of, um, there's definitely nothing wrong with, uh, drawing artistic depictions of angels because the Old Testament, well, the Old Testament did say not to make an image of God. It did say to make image of, like, the, the cherubim, which were carved into, like, the, the temple and, and tab, temple or tabernacle, one of those, one of those, uh, important things. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you don't, then just read it and, and tell me. Uh, okay, I'm out of stone. I'm gonna need to mine more. So, uh, yeah, let's see, how's, how's this, um, how's this doorway thing looking? Uh, okay, I almost died there. It's, it's looking better than it was just a se- oh, okay, crap. Um. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a rant of mine on beauty. I'm definitely going to talk a lot more about this. But, um, yeah, I think churches should be beautiful, and one day, I know there's, like, piles of dirt and, like, half-built archways everywhere, but one day my church is gonna look very beautiful. Trust me, bro. So now I'm gonna speed this up while I mine some more stones so I can keep, uh, keep building the church.